Hello everyone, welcome to another video. A few days ago, I felt so nostalgic about the old iOS style with glossy icons. I actually remember my first iPhone, the iPhone 5. Even I got the signing from Steve Bosniak. Anyway, those days are gone. But then I looked my Apple Watch and I thought, how will be an Apple Watch with the previous style from iOS and Steve Jobs era? Let's try to replicate Apple Watch Home with all icon style. And we will use only Swift UI. And also we will learn about lazy grid during this implementation. Let's get started. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. In a previous video, we talked about lazy BStack versus other components like BStack and List. We learned that lazy stack only load in memory the cells that are visible in the screen, saving a lot of memory for massive number of elements. Well, that lazy concept works in the same way for lazy grids. By the way, you can learn more about lazy BStack in the card here or in the description below. Unlike lazy stacks, with lazy grids, you can create layouts of data from one to many columns or rows. To display a grid in Swift UI, we need three components. The data we want to render in the screen, a collection of objects that represent the layout for the number of columns or rows, depending on the grid. And if we want a vertical layout, then we need to use lazy big grid. But if we want a horizontal layout, then we need to use lazy H grid. Let's see an example. Let's display 100 elements in a lazy big grid with four columns. There you go, we have a grid of 100 rec rectangles. Let's analyze the code. First off, grids are not scrollable by default. That's why we need to use scroll view here. Now let's talk about grid items. Grid item is the layout configuration for each column in the case of lazy grid and rows for lazy edge grid. By the way, to simplify the concept, let's make reference to lazy grid from now. We set up properties for each of our columns, like the size of each column, the spacing between columns, and the alignment. Let's start with the size. Size is an enum and support three different types of sizes. Fixed, flexible, and adaptive. Fixed is literally the exact amount of points that, for the case of columns, make reference to the width. In our example, it's 100, not more, not less. If there is no room for the next cell, it will be passed to the next row. We have also flexible that will expand as much as possible the space of a single column. You can set boundaries for minimum and maximum points. The rest with no specific points will take the remaining space. And finally, Adaptive will fit as many cells as possible per column with the restriction of minimum and maximum points. Now let's jump to the next parameter. Spacing is the distance between each cell from one column to another. And alignment will align the content relative to the container. In this example, all cells have the same size. Let's modify this to expand the width. We now expand the cells width every five cells. Now we'll get different results depending on the alignment. This is for leading. 
and now let's see center. This is a great example that cells in a grid are not fixed forever to the defined size in a grid item. That means if we find an overlapping, we need to take care of that. But with this little trick from Sufi Lab, we can fix the overlapping and create awesome custom layouts. In the same case we are expanding the width for a cell, we can add also an extra padding by simply using an empty view or clear color. For you to understand what is happening, I'm adding a color blue view. This is working because when we increase the cell's width, we are doubling the exact same space. This includes this additional spacing here. And then the blue view is added with the regular cell squid. That produces this really useful effect. And it's again another example that you can manipulate the grid in any way depending of your requirements. Now let's review the parameters for lazy grid. The first one is just the collection of grid items that we set up earlier. Columns for the case of lazy B grid and rows for lazy H grid. Next it's alignment, but now for the whole grid relative to its parent view. Works identical to other containers like BStack and lazy BStack. In this example is an horizontal alignment, but for lazy H stack is a vertical one. Let's add a header section to visualize this easier. This is for center. This is for leading. And this is for trailing. The next one is spacing. Spacing here is the space between rows. And finally, if you need to fix a header or footer view, you can use this parameter. And you see the difference? Nice! Those are the basics for lazy grids in SwiftUI. The sky is the limit to build awesome collection layouts. Now that we know that, let's start building the Apple Watch home. All right, let's start adding a C stack and color black has background. Now we need to set up grid items. We will create a grid item collection with fixed size of 100, a spacing of 16 and center alignment. Stop for a second. For our demo, we want to load a total of 30 columns. What should we do then? Just copy pasting the other 29 grid objects? Hmm, we can do that, but what will happen if we modify the number of columns later? It will be a nightmare to maintain that. Definitely, we need to find a better way. Well, it turns out that you can use a special initialization for arrays to declare the type of object and the number of copies on it. Let's use array repeating count initializer for this case. Great, this is much better. There is one more thing I would like to change, the magic numbers. Magic numbers are numbers in your code without any context. It's just magic. Avoid them as much as possible. Instead, we will create static private properties for size, space in between columns, and of course, the total number of columns.
very nice. The code is very explicit now. By the way, why the variables are static? This is because we are initializing an instance property and it's not allowed to use variables from self. Okay, move on. Now let's create the scroll view with horizontal and vertical scrolling, but hiding the scrolling indicator. Finally, the start of the show. Let's add a lazy big grid with grid items as columns, center alignment, and let's create another variable to identify the spacing between rows. By the way, self with capital S make reference to the type and not the instance. Now let's create a for each with thousand elements. Remember, it's a lazy grid, so performance will be okay. Now as a placeholder, let's use a white rectangle. In a moment, we will replace this with app icons. For our rectangle, we need to explicitly say what is the height for this item. So let's use also 100. Let's run again. And very nice, we have our grids with rectangles of size 100. Okay, next step is transforming those squares into perfect circles. Let's add a corner radius modifier with a value of size divided by 2. Excellent, we are almost done. Take a look at Apple Watch Home. The layout looks like a honeycomb. We can easily replicate that using an offset modifier. We need to add this offset every two rows for x axis. To calculate the offset of x, let's create a function and pass a parameter that is the current value from for each. By default, offset will be zero. That means no offset. Then the question is, how can we calculate when we are in the correct row? We can add the offset for even rows. For example, row zero, row two, and so on. Yes, I'm a developer and I always start counting from zero. So we need to get value and divide it by the number of columns, and then we can get the current row number. This makes sense because if we have 30 columns and value is 4, the result will be 0. But if value is 34, we will get 1 and so on. Now it's as simple as check if row number is even or not. What should happen when we find an even row? We need to add the half of the size of each cell. Let's return that. Cool, now we are going to apply offset modifier. Let's run this. Very nice. But... Um, I don't know how picky you are, but looks like offset is not perfectly aligned. This is because we forgot to consider the spacing from each cell. That is part of the equation. And don't worry, this is really simple to fix. We have to add the half of the spacing between columns. There you go. My OCD is happy now. Cool, the honeycomb layout is ready. We just need to add the images. And I have already added them. Here they are, the all iOS icons. Oh boy, this is so nostalgic. 
And I also created a global variable called apps to get each app name. Let's go back to Apple Watch View and add another function to get the app name. We have only 43 icon images and for each is iterating over 1000 elements. Just to represent a lot of apps, we will reuse the same image multiple times. And for avoiding crashes, we need to keep the range from 0 to 42 using this method. Last step, let's replace the rectangle for an image. Let's run this one more time. Wow, amazing. I love it. What about iPad? This is really cool. We have successfully rendered a lazy grid with retro iOS icons, but here is more work to do. For example, looking Apple Watch icons, they decrease the size until disappearing when they are far from the center of the screen. We can achieve this behavior using some maths and geometry reader in SwiftUI. But that's for the next video. Do you want to learn more about lazy stacks versus other views? Check out this video here. And if you want to learn more about SwiftUI, check out this playlist here. That's all for me. Thank you so much and have a great day.